Hi, I'm Daz. This is a Sharp 5P27H on the bench. What a big old thing it is. I think the speaker is made to look bigger than it is, but it's got a cassette player and a few other bits as well. Got this from an amateur radio friend. Um, not sure what condition it's in, but it was a reasonable price and uh, as though I need more junk. Just looking at the side controls, there's the 12 volt input switch for the mains, AC input. There's also nine batteries this takes, so uh, that cost you wouldn't it? There's a headphone socket, a monitor socket, a DIN socket, a mic and remote socket. My goodness, they've really thought of everything on here haven't they? Blimey. And even a beat switch, so I assume there must be a uh, AC bias in there somewhere. On this side there's an external aerial socket and that's horizontal and vertical hold. That's about it really. Um, there's your cavernous um, battery compartment. I guess it's the cells. Good grief. It cost you a small fortune to fill that with batteries. And it's certainly probably if you wanted to use the television you'd be uh, using uh, alkaline. <laughs> Well, looking at the controls at the front, you've got the UHF tuning, because in the UK we just had UHF for 625. I guess this is late 70s. Um, radio tuning dial, there's a selector to select TV um, and the three wave band. There's an AFC, and I see you've got local and DX for AM as well. So that's interesting. You've got your mode, there's a sleep, which I guess uses the cassette player um, to switch everything off. There's a mix balance. Control moving over. Move the camera first. There's, um, like I said, there's a source mic for mixing the microphone input that we've seen, bass, treble, and volume. So, and that looks like a built in microphone. I didn't see the meter move, so maybe that's jammed. Right, lots of buttons here. TV radio. Seemed to me. Oh, long way's working. So is medium wave. FM seems rather dead. Ah. Obviously, contacts need cleaning there. Uh, let's see what the TV does. Anything happening? Well, I've got to wait for the CRT to warm up, I guess. Oh, something is happening. Yes, something's happening with the TV. Right, there you are, and there's some test bars. Didn't quite look right, but uh, maybe I've got my generator set wrong. Oh, that looks better. <laughs> okay, it's just fiddle with the contrast. Oh, very noisy controls. Yeah, so the television is functional. Right, let's go over to the tape. Whoops. I hear something happening. Oh my goodness. They are very, very stiff. Mm -hmm. More grease problem. I can hear motor running anyway. Right. Oh dear. Wish you hadn't done something. That's not responding at all. Looking at the bottom, there is some arrows marking access screws, so I'll probably take that into account and have a look see if there's anything in the battery compartment. Ah, God, it weighs half a ton. <laughs> so you'd expect it's got a heavy CRT in it. I bet you it's got a metal chassis uh, cassette deck as well. Well, that was a smart move, wasn't it? Because I'd got the play control jammed down, I couldn't take the lid off. Luckily, the flywheel is turning and there was just enough room for me to poke the screwdriver in and push this auto stop lever. And that released it. So uh, I won't do that again. I can see there's some jammed tape in here. Anyway, this is it. So what have we got in here? What have we got? Well, this is undoubtedly the TV section. I guess that's the line output stage, perhaps. The lop's over there, so maybe it isn't. I don't know where it is then. 
There's a little picture tube which I should be very careful of. Looks like the tuner's over here. That's possibly the IF strip. Radio section's here. Mains transformer. Cassette deck which is indeed metal. And my goodness, there's some dust in this. Good grief. Oh, there's an additional micro switch on there. Yeah, so there we go. There's the inside of the sharp. Dusty too. Very, very dusty. Here's the top section. Now the speaker isn't quite as big as it made out to look, is it? It's a 3 watt 8 ohm speaker. It looks like there's a bipolar capacitor there for the tweeter. There's a cassette door. And a little switch there for the uh, dial lights, just where my right hand is. Well, it was a little bit tricky to work the deck out and get it off the uh, record tab, but uh, here is the motor. I'm just in the process of unplugging it. The, bi uh, the raise head goes a really long distance right the way down to the bias oscillator here, so a bit of a pain in the neck, just for note. The white inner core is on the right closest to the bias coil. Um, anyway, at least they've thoughtfully given you plugs so you can unplug it. Well, here we go. Here's the cassette mechanism. I've got a feeling I can't see a speed control anywhere unless it's on the board. So I wonder if that's the centrifugal motor. Um, centrifugal motor? Well, yeah, centrifugal controlled motor with the little switches. So a governor type motor. This does not look good. If you look here, you can see that's very slow in operation. It's just full of fluff. Now, I saw some gears in this and thought, hmm, that probably means it's a bit simpler. But you'll see in a minute it isn't. There's a little bit of wear to the head, so the cassette player was probably used. Um, does quite well. Look at all these belts. Really? My goodness, there's a lot of belts in there. A lot of belts, but oh, I'm wondering if some of this is, yeah, auto stop mechanism. That's an auto stop mechanism there, so that will need cleaning up. But yeah, it looks like it's full of dust and the greases. Is that grease? It feels more like glue. Oh dear. Right, so this is going to need a bit of work. <laughs> well, three screws release the. Uh, piano keys. You've got to be very careful that I don't go ping because I don't do that as well to release this. <laughs> Not the best way to leave it. You can just bet that's going to go ping somewhere. But anyway, now I can see a little bit more what's going on here. I guess this is just this is just completely seized. Yeah. Bit fiddly, but you can form that bit out. Yeah. Oh, sticky. I don't think I've ever seen such a auto stop mechanism with so many pulleys, but there we go. Just I've got my piano keys back and that's working so much better now. There was a bit of rust on which I had to sand off. It's all been re cleaned and re-greased. I'm just going to see where I can clean and get to here. I don't really fancy a complete disassembly if I can avoid it. I'm going to try and clean up what I can. Um, but... Uh, yeah, there's still plenty of sticky. The interesting thing is that the uh, flywheel grease was still quite good. So that wasn't too bad. And there's a little pin there for the auto stop mechanism, which is this. That's what actually disengages the uh, stop. Yeah, push that lever and then issues a stop. So the only thing is it's one of those detectors that works um, before the pinch wheel. So... If, so if the tape gets uh, stuck on the take-up spool, you're going to have a tangle, whatever. But it's not too bad on this side. Uh, it was definitely the piano keys part that was the worst. That, that you know. We're really disassembled now. I've got the uh, heads out <clears throat> and the slider because it's quite stiff down there. I just hope I can remember how this goes back together. Took some photographs with the phone, so. But, uh, yeah, it's mm, pretty caked with grease still. While well, I'm making good progress, these ball bearings are now nicely lubricated. I actually found that uh, the grease helps hold the bearings in, uh, ball bearings in while I put this in. 
bit of grease on the uh, little thing that uh, auto stop mechanism that gets its power from the flywheel a bit of grease there as well I think that's the main part that really needs greasing that and the pause control give these pulleys a clean up even though I've written down the diameter and things of these I'm just going to get my bag of um, mixed bolts up and uh, um, just try and uh, find some that uh, fit I think that's going to be the easiest thing just got to clean the flywheel up and re-lubricate that put that back in but anyway it feels a lot better than it did a lot lot better feels a lot better so hopefully I've put everything back in the right place not an easy job very time consuming very messy lots of IPA and cotton buds as you can see but uh, at least the mechanism will work properly now but uh, very very time consuming well, several bags of belts later, I found some to meet the criteria. Generally, what I do is, if it can stall the motor, then it's tight enough. But I also watch the motor current. If the motor current's excessively high, once I've put a belt on, I know it's too tight, because um, the motor current will rise. So, But this is about the best compromise I can find from all that big pile of belts very very time consuming indeed so uh, anyway that looks good just got to put the bearing back on and lubricate it put the little tiny plastic thing on the other side that protects some grease coming from the bearing and give it all a good clean managed to get the pinch wheel clean my goodness I've never seen so much oxide I don't think that's ever been cleaned <laughs> But there we go, I guess the early tapes from the 70s probably shed oxide more than they, the more modern ones did. This is never easy, but yep, that sounds nice and healthy. Fast forward, yep, play, pause. Yep, that's looking good. That's the pause mechanism. Nicely greased up now. Always got to remember to put that little rub, uh, plastic bit back that stops the grease running up the uh, um, capstan. It's obviously been a little bit damp, hasn't it? I would imagine. There's a close up view. While the deck's out, the next obvious thing is to clean pots and switches. Hopefully, I can get access to them because they were a bit flaky. I didn't have the TV sound on the first attempt, so get me tin of contact cleaner on and get to work. Okay, well we've got a working deck then. Excellent. I thought this is a line output transistor, but it looks like it's a ten and a half volt regulator. The line output transistor's down there. Not even heat synced, so uh, obviously a very small television doesn't re require much of uh, power, does it? So uh, there you go. Got that wrong. Yeah. Uh, the meter's working now, but it's intermittent, and I think there's a dry joint on the board, but I have to decide if I want to take the thing completely apart just to fix that. The meter reads in record, but I think this is an AGC, so not really relevant. In playback it reads battery voltage and in radio it reads um, tuning so that's what the meter does anyway. <clears throat> You're not surprised are you at that? You're really not surprised. <laughs> yeah. It's absolutely full of dust. I bet the tweet is just as bad. Never mind. Not so bad but a little bit sun bleached like the other one. I expect this is sat on a dashboard for a very long time I suspect. Unfortunately, the tweet is open circuit, but uh, to be honest with you, it, all it looks like is a small miniature speaker, which is what I've replaced it with. I've had to use DC to work out which polarity, because of course this works the opposite direction to this one. <laughs> so you want them both pushing and both sucking as appropriate. Um, so why that's gone open circuit, I don't know, but you can see that's fairly sun bleached, isn't it? Anyway, there we go, so that's working now. 
I guess that's about as good as I'm going to get. I just had a little twig of the height and vertical linearity, but it's not too bad, is it? <laughs> I don't know what I'd expect from something like this. Um... <laughs> Testing, testing, one, two, three, testing, testing, one, two, three, testing the recorder of the sharp. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three, testing, testing, one, two, three, testing the recorder of the sharp. Testing, one, two, three. That was the sharp 5P27H radio cassette TV from the late 70s about 77 I think but uh, I'll have to check up on that anyway I hope you enjoyed that one um, it's a bit strange being inside this uh, device I haven't got much room have I <laughs> a bit squashed in anyway thanks for watching and uh, take care and I'll see you soon